Hello, and welcome to a quick overview of the blood agar test and rapid immunoassay strep test in MicroLab. The blood agar test is a uh, uh, blood agar media is a differential and um, uh, enriched media used to promote the growth of hemolytic bacteria. Uh, hemolysis is the breaking open of red blood cells and the destruction of hemoglobin as a carbon source for the bacteria. Uh, bacteria that produce a class of enzymes called hemolysins are capable of this hemolytic activity. The two most common genre of bacteria that are looked for in blood agar are the streptococcus species and staphylococcus species. Streptococcus in particular um, uh, carry out three different types of hemolysis, alpha, beta, and gamma. In the clinical laboratories or in the hospitals, you'll oftentimes hear of the Lancefield classification system. And in the Lancefield classification system, we have alpha hemolytic, beta hemolytic, also known as group A streps and group B streps. But it's a little bit backwards. Uh, what are called um, alpha hemolytic bacteria are known as group B streps, and what are known as beta hemolytic bacteria are those are called group A streps. So it's just a little bit backwards. Um, these are uh, sometimes referred to more often in the hospitals, they're referred to as a group A or a group B strep, which is why I bring that up to you. Now, the blood agar test will return some type of result as either alpha, beta, or gamma hemolysis. In alpha hemolysis, we have incomplete breakdown of the red blood cells. You can see here that the agar itself turns this kind of um, greenish color around the bacteria. Uh, the red blood cells are cleared, they're lysed open and hemoglobin is destroyed, but the iron is left behind. And when the iron is left behind, it oxidizes in the presence of oxygen and that's why we get kind of this greenish type tint to the bacteria and some of the agar. In beta hemolysis, this is complete hemolysis. So you can see there's no heme group left behind and the agar itself is completely clear where any of the hemolytic or hemolysins came into contact with red blood cells. Gamma hemolysis means non-hemolytic or no hemolysis occurring. In this case, this bacteria, and this is E. coli, has no hemolytic activity, so it's incapable of breaking down red blood cells. Remember that your alpha hemolysis or alpha hemolytic bacteria in Lancefield are called group B streps and in um, clinical settings are our uh, beta hemolytics are called group A. Now, um, the rapid immunoassay test is known as a lateral flow device, and it's based off of ELISA's. And ELISA is an enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay, if you remember that from lecture. And the rapid strep A test that we run in our laboratory is used specifically to detect the, to detect the presence of beta hemolytic streptococcus. It's called a rapid A strep because beta hemolytic strep are group A strep bacteria in the Lancefield classification system. A lateral flow device is a form of ELISA, it's real small, um, and it uses antibodies to detect very specific epitopes of staph pyogenes, I'm sorry, excuse me, of strep pyogenes, the uh, antigens. Uh, this lateral flow device that we're looking at, the group A strep test, allows us to differentiate between different strep groups. It's very specific, um, and it's usually used as a preliminary test for the presence of a strep infection. Just to take a look real quick on a lateral flow device, this is just kind of the idea of a general lateral flow device. First, on one end, we insert a swab or a few drops of our patient sample. And we also usually add some buffer. And this will serve to kind of break everything up to expose the antigens that are present in our patient sample. As that buffer begins to flow through capillary action across the filter paper, it will first come into contact with antibodies that are enzyme linked. These antibodies will be specific for epitopes on the antigens of the patient sample, if that antigen is present. Those antibodies will get picked up by the fluid and bound to that antibody and continue the flow across the filter paper.
It will then come into uh, contact with a strip on the filter paper that's impregnated with secondary antibodies specific to the same antigen. This will trap the enzyme-linked antibodies, and we get this kind of direct ELISA known as a sandwich ELISA. And so we get this kind of sandwich act, um, action going on between uh, the two N antibodies, one enzyme-linked, and then of course in the middle is our antigen itself. The uh, flow will continue from there. Uh, the buffer moves across and any uh, unattached antibodies, any antibodies that are flowing through that are not attached to antigen will attach to another set of secondary antibodies um, that are specific for antibodies and not for our antigen. This is the control line and it tells us that our test is working. And then finally at the end, all of the final flow gets trapped by this wicking pad. When we take a look at the results of an, a uh, um, rapid strep test, the patient sample was inserted here in a cotton swab and buffer was added. And then the buffer ran across and in this section of the test right around here is where it came into contact with the initial antibody that was enzyme linked, was then carried across the filter paper and it gets caught finally in the wicking pad here. You can see on this test that the enzyme linked antibody got trapped by additional, by secondary antibodies and this told us that this test result is positive. The C here stands for control. This simply tells us that the test is valid. So since there's no red line on this one, this test result here is considered negative. You can see um, this test was run on strep pyogenes, which is a beta hemolytic strep or group A strep. And this was run on S sanguis, which is a group B or alpha hemolytic strep. So the rapid strep test, um, strep is not the only organism that these types of tests are used for. This is even used out in um, uh, areas where they're trying to diagnose uh, malaria. They're, these rapid tests are great for malaria tests. Um, they don't need refrigeration. They can be done very quickly. They're small kits. They're inexpensive. Um, and they're used for a whole multitude of different infectious organisms. Uh, we, they are The first ones to come out were the strep the strep ones, and they were used mostly by pediatricians in looking for strep throat in young children. So that's just a quick overview. Uh, in the D2L shell, I'll also include a video for, uh, uh, for the rapid strep test so you can see how that test is run. Have a great class.